This is the fifth part of my lecture on probability distributions in which I'm going to be talking about the student's T distribution. The T distribution was devised by W.S. Gossett. He was an English statistician. We've had a Swiss and a French and a German statistician so far, so it's about time we had an Englishman. Gossett was born in Canterbury in 1876 and went to study mathematics and chemistry at Oxford University. He then worked for Guinness uh, in their brewery in Dublin and there he applied statistical tests to select the best variety of barley for brewing Guinness. Only small numbers of tests were possible so he developed new techniques for dealing with small samples. Now Guinness prohibited their employees from publishing for fear of losing their brewing secrets so Gossett had to publish all his statistical ideas under the pseudonym of student. Hence when we talk about students' T distribution it's nothing to do with university students but actually relates to W.S. Gossett. Gossett was dealing with small samples and he knew that the average value of many samples follows a normal distribution when the sample size is large. That's the central limit theorem that we've already talked about. But Gossett was interested in small samples because in his trials of different types of barley he wasn't able to produce very many different brews from each different type of barley. So for small samples he found that the distribution of results was slightly broader than the normal distribution and hence he developed the T distribution. The difference between the T distribution and the normal distribution arises because you don't know the actual standard deviation but have to calculate it from the sample. Now the T distribution is very similar to the standardized normal distribution but it's slightly broader. The mean of the t-distribution is defined as zero, just like the mean of the standardized normal distribution, but the standard deviation of the t-distribution is slightly greater than one. Remember the standard deviation of the standardized normal distribution is defined as being exactly one. The t-distribution is characterized by something called degrees of freedom, which we usually write as df. It's related to the number of measurements and generally the number of degrees of freedom is the number of measurements minus one. We'll talk more about degrees of freedom in a later lecture. But if the number of degrees of freedom is large, that is the number of measurements is large, the T distribution is indistinguishable from this standardized normal distribution. So for degrees of freedom more than about 30, the standard deviation is very close to 1. Here's a graph of the T distribution shown in as a solid green line for 1 degree of freedom compared with the dashed curve which is the standardized normal distribution. And you can see that for small degrees of freedom like this the T distribution is broader than the standardized normal distribution. That is, it's got a standard deviation greater than 1. There are more measurements out in the tails than the normal distribution would predict. But if the number of degrees of freedom is large, and here we see in blue the T distribution for 30 degrees of freedom, we see that it's very close to the standardized normal distribution and hence it has a standard deviation equal to 1. So for large degrees of freedom we can use the normal distribution instead of the T distribution and they're very close to each other. The T distribution can be calculated in Excel using the function T dist. So that's all I need to say about the student's T distribution and that brings us to an end of the fifth part of this lecture on probability distributions.